And okay, we are now recording this meeting. Today is July 21st. My name is Jocelyn Campbell, and I am the chairwoman of the Nahantville Board of Appeals. And we are having a Zoom meeting tonight um, pursuant to the governor's order, which I need to read a little blurb about. First agenda item on the agenda is going to be 35 Castle Road. And um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the Oaks Meeting Law, General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 18. And the Governor's March 15, 2020 order, imposing strict limitation on the number of people who may gather in one place. This meeting of the Nahan Zoning Board of Appeals will be conducted via the location to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and our parties with rights and or requirements to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen in or watch the meeting may do so in the following manner. They may do so by signing into the Zoom, via real time or by calling in onto one of the phone numbers that are listed also on the town's website and in the advertisement for the meeting. Okay. And so let's call this meeting to order. Again, I've already provided the date, July 21st, 2020. Um, as you all know, we originally had this meeting scheduled for July 1st, a due to technical problem with the town's Zoom account, we weren't able to log on. And so we are starting the meeting tonight. We have five members of the Zoning Board of Appeals present on Zoom, and we're going to call that meeting to order right now. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce the board members. I've already introduced myself, but we have with us tonight um, Peter Barber, and he's, you can see him right here with the old picture in the background, and uh, Peter is a regular member, and Max Casper, also a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, and we have David McCool, also it says sales iPhone on David McCool's and Donna Lee Leonardo, who is our alternate member, who is helping us out tonight because one member had to introduce himself for this hearing. So thank you, Donna, for coming tonight. And um, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to explain the process. What happens here is we, um, the applicant, let the applicant speak, give the applicant an opportunity to present their, their matter. Um, we also read the hearing uh, notice from the newspaper. And then we have an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, and we also deliberate. And when we deliberate, the applicant, no one really can speak to us. That's just a conversation between us. And once the case is heard, we do our deliberation. We usually have some motions. We discuss the application of the Nahan zoning bylaws to the matter. And then we usually come to some findings and decisions. And then we'll notify you what those findings and decisions are. So the next step is for us to read the article that was the, the advertisement, sorry, that was placed in the newspaper for this matter. So I'm going to do that quickly right now. Usually we take turns, but because of the, uh, the Zoom technology, I think it's easier if I just read it. So here's the advertisement that was placed regarding this matter. Um, at 7 p.m. on the petition filed by Ronald Capucci, owner of the property at 35 Castle Road to Hunt for a special permit and or variance or front setback, the building inspector has denied the building permit, stating that the proposed remodel is in violation of section 5.03 of the zoning bylaws of the town of Nahant in the following areas. The proposed front yard setback is 14 feet, with a minimum allowed is 25 feet. Now the last thing that I'm going to read in regard to this matter, 35 Castle, is that um, Prior to the last date that we planned for the hearing, was this, this is a letter from the Planning Board of Appeals, um, sorry, the, the, the Hunt Planning Board, and it is dated June 25th, 2020. And this letter I'm going to read into the record for the applicant and for the members, maybe who haven't seen it yet, you should have all seen it by now. Um, it says, to my attention, Chair, the Hunt Zoning Board of Appeals, Town Hall, um, regarding 35 Castle Road special permit variance requested at front porch that would exacerbate existing nonconformity with 25 foot front setback requirements. Dear Ms. Campbell, this letter shares the planning board's comments on the above captioned building permit denial that is on appeal for the ABA. The proposed construction would add a front porch 
to the residents that would right. have been 14 feet into the, from the front lot line compared to the existing 18 foot setback in an area that requires a 25 foot setback. The proposed construction would would also would increase the height of the residence by approximately 50 percent, more than double the total floor area of the residence without violating other dimensional requirements. The planning board has no objection to this project should the ZBA grant the requested special permits variances that can be justified. However, the planning board is concerned about expanding the size of such a residence in an area that is subject to frequent flooding. The planning board suggests that the ZBA consider the views of the Nahant Conservation Committee before acting on this appeal. Okay. So, um, if all the members agree, I think we'll just get started with the hearing. Peter, Donna, Max, David, you guys are in all agreement to get started? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. All right, so Mr. Petrucci, um, let's see, we can take you off of mute there. Okay, so I noticed you mentioned about the Conservation Commission, and I actually already had that meeting. Oh, yeah, enough. I had that meeting recently, and, and they approved uh, my plans. Um, I recently was able to prove that my property doesn't flood, and I went through an engineering company to pull us out of the VE zone, put us into a a more um, beneficial AE a e zone. Excuse me a sec. So I'm basically, I'm, I'm changing around the property so the front of the house will be sort of a main entrance um, facing Castle Road as opposed to on the side. Um, and we're adding space to, to raise a family here. And along with that is sort of a covered farmer's porch which is, which is pretty similar to many other farmer's porches here in Castle Road at the beginning of Castle Road. Um, there are many houses that are very close to the street um, with those sort of farmers which is covering. So I'm not okay. sure what else you'd like me to like me to say about it. Yes, could you just tell us um, first of all how long have you owned the property and um, you know what are your plans totally here? So I bought this house in 2014. I actually own a property across the street on Castle Road as well. I lived there first. Um, found out that Phil Baldwin was selling his property, and I just lived at the property and bought it, you know, and then, you know, met my wife, and now we plan to raise a family. Okay. Any members have any questions for the applicant? I'm trying to figure out which side fate is it the back, the yeah, the large decks face the ocean. Yeah, so okay. Yeah, the back of the house is on the yeah is the ocean side facing the seawall in, in Doggy Beach. Okay, I was just trying to get the placement of the house. Yeah, of course, of course, and that okay. So, uh, having moved you out of the into an AE zone, does the things that you need to do to this house require you to bring it up to FEMA? Yeah, so what I have to do is I need to eliminate, uh, well, I'm bringing all the utilities up to the first floor. That's one of the reasons I need to add space to the front because, um, you know, a portion of that space will be using as an entryway will be a sort of utility closet. You bring the utilities up out of the basement, add uh, those flood vents down in the basement wall, um, and, and eliminate the interior stairs down to the basement, basically just call it a crawl space. So there are things I still need to do. Um, luckily, I don't need to lift the structure at all um, because I was able to prove the the height of, of the current structure is within the realm. I just need to do some work down at the basement for the improvement laws. So is the scope of the project more than just the decks? So we just happen to be looking at the decks tonight? Yeah, so the decks are the only uh, the only parts of the, of the project that will encroach on the setback line. Um, the rest of it is in within setback. So as the uh, board had mentioned, we do plan to throw a second level on top of this structure that's currently here. Um, the current structure is only 18 feet from the street, um, so it's it's still within you know within it was encroaching on the setback line. I just want to add about four feet onto that as a you know as a farmer's porch. Um, is there is there a basement? Is there currently a basement? There is currently a basement which we we need to pull all the utilities and the uh, electric panel out and bring it to the first floor into a utility closet. So that's one of the reasons we're adding that space to the front of the house so we have that space for utility closet 
Um, have you have you met with Wayne about the about those future plans? Yeah, I met with. I've been trying to get this finished for about three years now. Um, you know, while in the velocity wave zone, it was a little bit more challenging. So I went the route of working with Wood's whole group to uh, to to update the maps, and they were able to prove to FEMA that um, that I, I shouldn't have to be in the in the velocity wave zone here in, in this property. So yeah, I did meet with Wayne multiple times, um, and you know, basically I'm following the process that he had, he had uh, mentioned that I should follow. Do you have Do you have a permit for that for that other work yet, or not yet? Well, no, no. That's this is really it. All hinges on this particular meeting. So, um, so God willing, you, you all give me uh, the the right to build that front porch. So I don't need to alter my plans again. And um, then I think once it's all squared away, I can go ahead and get my, my permit to build. Because again, Concom already did approve the plans to dig extra foundations to add that extra space. So that's been done. Um, it's really just realizing the particular meeting here. Okay, yeah, because our purview is just going to be these decks, but it gets pretty complicated with the flood resistant construction if it's a substantial renovation. So just sure. make sure you have that down. Well, it's, you're saying a lot of the right things, but. Yeah, CONCOM already approved to put footings uh, where those decks would, would, would be held up. So to dig in those spaces for those footings are already, it's already approved to CONCOM. Yep, that's yeah, good. Yeah, but does this, if, does this hit that 50% rule? Yes, I mean, if, unfortunately if, it does um, because okay. the cost of materials is so high these days. Okay, all right. So you're aware of that. I just, uh, I just aware want to of that. Sure. That's why I'm dealing with the basement issue, bringing the, uh, not that the basement ever got water ever since it's been here, bringing all the utilities up to the first floor and um, basically eliminating that as useful space. And are you eliminating the basement too, right? You're going to have to eliminate the basement? I'm eliminating the basement as useful space. Yeah, it has to be considered as crawl space with flood vents, uh, even though it never once in its existence had water. I still have to do that work. Okay. Again, I don't think that's all relevant to this, but make, make sure you get that down. Yeah, no, Concom and I already spoke about that. I, I'm, I'm very much aware. The only relief that we're looking for today is for that front step back. That, that is it. And the size of the project is no longer an issue based upon what I've heard from the applicant regarding FEMA. And the, is it, did you get a letter of map revision on that? I have a letter of map revision which went into effect uh, on January 25th, I think, or 23rd. Um, but yes, so actually I'm currently now situated in an AE12 zone. My okay. first floor is at 13.9. Um, so as long as I bring the utilities up and become flood compliant with the flood vents in the walls, um, again, CONCOM signed off on all the new footings I, I plan to pour with this front deck and the extra foundation in the front portion of the house where my entry will be. Um, it's, it's really about just that setback line, making sure I can, uh, again, my, 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 the front of my house is currently at 18 feet. Um, I just want to add four feet to that to make it a really nice farmer's porch to sort of align with the remain, the rest of the houses on this street pretty close to me. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions for the applicant before we proceed to ask if anyone is here to object or speak in favor or against? Okay. Are there, is anyone present who would like to speak in favor of this project? Aside from the applicant, of course. Hmm. Is there anyone on the line, on Zoom, or present who would like to speak uh, in opposition for this project or of this project? I see a lot of people here, a lot of 16 members on 16 uh, residents or interested parties here um, on the Zoom. And um, so there's no one who would like to speak in favor or in opposition. So we'll move on to um, our deliberation if there's no opposition and no, no one else to speak, no public comment, it looks like. All right, so Mr. Petrucci, we will talk amongst ourselves now about your case and then we'll let you know what we decide. Just keep listening in. Okay. All right. <coughs> I'll mute myself again, okay? Okay. Look like we're just looking for one area of relief. It's like a special permit. We have the right to do that on that setback, 25 feet, 25 foot setback. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we had a, uh, the, the one concern, the, the planning board 
had, um, I think was, you know, with the paperwork we got from the CONCOM, it appears that they didn't have a problem with it. So um, that was the one, I think the one question that they had. Is that the planning board's objective now to weigh in on all hearing, all um, positions? They, you know, they should. I think they're supposed to. <laughs> Right. They haven't in the past, but I think they're supposed to. They they have they have occasionally on bigger items, but I think now they there's new leadership, so maybe they'll weigh in on all of them. Can I ask you all a question? Um, does this? Did, I'm just going to share my screen with the other board members for a minute. So I want you to see um, this question. I have. I'm looking at the bylaws and just looking at this area of frontage in all districts upon the planning board, approval of the planning board. This is regarding 502 special regulations regarding curved streets. This is a curved street, but not great curve. Um, so the frontage for the lots on the, what's it, the degree of the greatest curve is less than 100 feet. This says, do you think this affects us at all? No. No, nah, I don't think so either. Yeah. Okay. And not that reduced to average of front other yards. And I went up there and I did look at all the other yards, and there's several that are closer than this um, to the street here appears. This one I was curious about because I was almost wondering if he would have been able to do it by right under that provision there, Jocelyn. Yeah, this, I think it's be close. I think he still needs the relief though, right? Just because we can do it. What do you think? No, I think it actually reduces the setback. Several of them were very close. So, but in no event less than 15 feet. But this would bring him to 14. So it's still a foot under that. Oh, so, oh okay. Yeah. You know, even if we could go that route, you know. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to look at that and see if you guys had any comment on that. So, um, all right, so we brought the motion. So does anybody want to bring a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve this special permit um, and for, for the um, project to be built in substantial conformance with the plans provided. I'll second that. Okay, um, any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Um, we have to do a roll call. So, um, Peter Barber says I. Peter Barber. I think Peter. that's the easiest way to do it instead of yeah. calling people. Everybody names. just say their name and say what you're saying. <coughs> right. Max Pastor, I. <clears throat> David McCool, I in favor. And Donnelly Leonardo, I. And Jocelyn Campbell, I. So that's good. Now let's see if we can, uh, we do need to make some findings though. We need to make a finding for the special permit criteria that the change, extension, or alteration shall not be more detrimental than the existing nonconformity to the neighborhood. Um, so we bring a motion to bring that finding. We need to do that for the special permit. Uh, I'll make a motion that uh, due to finding, we uh, grant a special permit. I'll second it, Jocelyn. Second by Donna. Any discussion on that motion regarding the finding? Okay, a roll call, please. Uh, Peter Barber says aye in favor. <coughs> Max, aye. David McCool, aye in favor. Donnelly Leonardo, aye. And Jocelyn Campbell, aye. Okay, so we have just granted a special permit to you, Mr. Petrucci, for the regard to that front setback for your front porch. So what will happen is, is we'll write the decision as soon as humanly possible. And then there's a 20 day um, wait period for purposes of appeal for any neighbors who wish to appeal. 
And um, so once we're at that point, then you, you know, you'll be issued the special permit and you'll record it at the registry of deeds. Okay, so 20 days until I can obtain a permit for this? From the date that I filed the decision. Okay, um, when do you think that, that might be? As soon as humanly possible. We're all volunteers <laughs> here and I don't have no, a secretary or anybody to write it up for me, but um, I will write it up and get it there as soon as possible. Okay, so okay, so I'll just try to plan ahead a little bit. Thank you so much. I appreciate all your time. I understand your volunteers, and I'm um, excited to add some space to my family here. And I think it'll be within two weeks. You'll be, you'll have the decision filed. Great. <coughs> okay. So within two weeks, I can go and reapply for the permit. I'm sorry, Max. I'm oh, sorry. That was me. Uh, so within two weeks, I can apply for the permit. Reapply. Well, as soon as the decision's filed and the application period has run, as the appeal period has run. Okay. Okay. All right. So two weeks, probably plus twenty days, right? Is what you're saying? Right. Just keep an eye out. We'll do like I said as soon as we can. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Okay, guys. We've got seven minutes till the next hearing begins. Okay. Do we have any business? Any housekeeping to do? Yeah, I think we do. Don't we have to uh, to uh, vote? on that case is that tonight we're not doing it tonight because there's been a request to amend the order okay you talk about to linda lane okay i understand their attorneys have filed a request to amend the order to change the language a little bit that's my understanding from dan script dan if you're on the phone fill us in um so we, we're going to take that up at our next meeting and we'll schedule one if we don't have one that's calling for us to meet in the next, you know, couple of, in the next month or so. Um, and so when it comes to this meeting here, the next hearing that's starting in, in about five minutes, I know that Max Casper was going to recuse himself and therefore Donna Lee is here, thank, thankfully, and David's back for this <coughs> next hearing. Um, let's see. Max may still stay on, I don't know, but no, he's, He's going to recuse himself from the hearing. Oh, change paperwork. Yes, they change the paperwork. Five minutes. Hi, David. Hello there. How are you doing? Hey, Dave. Good, how are you? Good. I think it's kind of funny. The uh, first preseason Red Sox game is on in a few minutes. Oh. And the four statues that are out in front of the uh, stadium, they all have masks on. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, at least they didn't tear them down. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I heard. I kind of heard a sad one. They were tearing down statues, and I can't remember if it was like Nashville or, uh, you know, one of those places. But they had a, a statue of Stevie Ray Vaughan. I don't know if you all know Stevie Ray Vaughan, the musician, mm -hmm. and he was wearing kind of a cowboy hat, wide brim cowboy hat, and a long leather jacket. I guess uh, like a waistcoat. And they didn't know that it was a musician. They thought it was um, a plantation owner. So they started to destroy the statue before somebody let them know that it was Stevie Ray Vaughan. So. Should do their homework first. Yeah, exactly. Jocelyn, were you able to um, let um, Dan Scripp know about our phone conversation on Willow, about Willow Road? Yes. Okay. Peter and I had a brief conversation about the, um, he reported to me that um, the applicant on that matter had informed him that there was some progress, the construction progress at the house. And so I did notify council of that conversation. Peter, 
Yeah. Quick question. Um, is there still, whenever we have town meeting, is there still a plan for the Coast Guard housing to come up with <laughs> the articles? Yeah, I, it's really funny. I've been kind of remiss in, in that whole thing, but we were waiting for, um, we were waiting for some surveys. Uh, and when I say survey, I mean land survey. Um, the Hayes company has been doing for us. We're trying to stake out the property. And the, the problem is they came up with some, in the paperwork that they found online, they came up with some irregularities in the way that the deed was transferred from us to the U or from the town to the U S government, to the U S government, back to the town and some things in between. Um, the problem is, so we were waiting for that information before we we're going to have one final meeting and then have a hearing so that we're ready for a town meeting. The problem is they can't get into the, um, the, um, the registry of deeds is closed and the town hall just opened up and they haven't been able to get any information from either of those locations because of COVID. So <clears throat> I am requesting, uh, I'm, I'm looking for a schedule to have a meeting in the next two weeks um, with the committee and determine, I think we're gonna move forward with a pl public hearing anyways, just because we need to, to get information out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, there may be some little irregularities with both Dan Script and the surveyor and uh, town administrator said that any of the things that, were, that we found would not be, um, you know, game changers or deal breakers to um, whatever we want to do with the property. So. Thanks for the update. Sure. What, what do you want to do with the property, Peter? Um, well, the, the recommendation from the committee at this point is to essentially tear down all of the houses, the existing temporary middle military houses, uh, two by three construction. Um, do a little bit of leveling the land so that the uh, what most people don't realize is you can't put a whole lot more houses than what's existing because the land drops off so sharply. If you walk behind those houses, um, the after, I don't know, maybe 10 yards, it just drops off to a almost a sheer cliff, but it goes down. And so the idea is to kind of level it out a little bit so that it's a little more flat with the road and then it uh, allows for a little bit more yard area um, but essentially tear the houses down level the lots and sell individual 12 individual house lots so that's our current plan big plan yeah and, and people that are on the zoning board of appeals get first dibs correct thank you <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> I yeah. <laughs> that, David that's said, the funny thing. David Cole you know, said it was okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> what's really funny is we did a lot of we we actually did a Thanks, lot of dude. research, and you know, chapter thirty. I think it's is it thirty B procurement. Yeah. Um, thirty yeah. B procurement. 30B, yeah. yeah. So I think it's thirty B procurement laws. Like, yeah. This yeah. first of all, the town has to deem it as excess assets. And then once it's deemed excess assets, then it literally goes out to bid. I mean, it, they put it out on the street and, and whether we bid out real estate uh, people to sell it or basically put each lot out to bid, but it has to be done per the laws. You can't, we can't say, well, we only want in haunt people that, you know, uh, people that live in the haunt to have an opportunity. It doesn't work that way. No. <clears throat> We got time, 731. Ready to go, okay. All right, we're gonna get started with the second hearing for the evening. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, today is July 21st, it is 732 p.m. And my name is Jocelyn Campbell, I'm the chairwoman of the Nahant Zoning Board of Appeals. We are going to start our second hearing for the evening and this is regarding 156 Bass Point Road. Um, and I am recording this meeting. This is going to be recorded and it's going to be public record. If anyone objects to being recorded, they can get off now, uh, let us know, but it is going to be recorded. And um, so the first thing we have to do tonight is we need to um, 
we read the governor's order in, it just takes a moment, and I'm going to read that because we are um, meeting in this very unusual manner. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Laws Chapter 30 and A Section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order, imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Nahan Zoning Board of Appeals will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and a requirement to attend this meeting may be found on the town's website. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen or watch may do so in the following manner, by logging into Zoom um, or by calling in on one of the telephone numbers that are posted along with the invitation uh, to this meeting. Okay? And so the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to, um, let me explain a little bit about, uh, introduce us, ourselves and explain a little bit about the process here. Again, I already introduced myself, I'm Jocelyn Campbell. Also with us tonight are um, four other members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. We have David Walsh, who is here. Hey, David. And then we have Peter Barber and um, Donna Lee Leonardo and David McCool. All these are members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. And um, so what we're going to do tonight is in, one, in a few minutes, I'm going to read the newspaper article that was also posted um, in the Lynn item um, beginning two weeks ago for purposes of this meeting. And um, once I'm done with that, then we'll start the process, which is where um, the applicant gets to present their matter to the board. And then we will ask questions if need be, if we have any questions. Uh, once we're done with the questions, we'll see if, um, anyone wants to speak in favor or in opposition of the petition. And then after that, we will deliberate. When we deliberate, no one else can speak to us. That's when we talk amongst ourselves. If we have questions about other people, we certainly will um, ask them. We may bring some motions at that point in time, and uh, then we'll have a vote on the decision on the matter and whether we decide it today or continue it and, and whether we you know, come to a, a, a you know, meeting on that, then we will adjourn. Once we decide the matter, then there's a 20-day um, right of appeal. After that, once the decision is filed. So um, the first thing, next thing I want to do now is to read the newspaper ad that was placed in the newspaper. Um, and it said, um, 7.30 p.m. on the petition filed by Glenn Kennedy of Renave LLC, owner of the property located at 156 Bass Point Road, Nahant, for a special permit and or variance for lot coverage, right side setback, open space, and parking. The building inspector has denied the building permit stating that the proposed lot coverage is 43%, where the maximum allowed is 25%. The proposed right side setback is one foot or less, where the minimum allowed is 10 feet. The proposed open space is 37%, where the minimum allowed is 45%. And the proposed parking is three spaces where the minimum allowed is four. Okay, and so the last thing I have to read tonight before we really get started is also very quick, but it's a letter from the planning board. Um, the planning, the applicant should know that prior to us getting a matter, all the other town boards that are involved have a 35 day, at least one of them has a 35 day, and so they all get a chance to review prior to us hearing the matter. And this letter from the Nahant, um, Town of Nahant Office of the Nahant Planning Board dated June 25th, 2020, was to my attention, Jocelyn Campbell, Esquire Chair, Nahant Zoning Board of Appeals, regarding 156 Bass Point Road, special permit slash variance requested to add rear deck and side staircase that would reduce right setback to less than one foot. Dear Ms. Campbell, this letter shares the planning board's comments on the above captioned building permit denial that is on appeal to the ZBA. The proposed construction would add a rear deck and side staircase that would reduce the right side setback to less than one foot in an area that requires a minimum right side setback of 10 feet. The proposed construction would also reduce the property's open space from the current 55% to 37% compared to the required minimum of 45%. The planning board is concerned that this neighborhood already is so crowded with widespread nonconformity with dimensional requirements. 
that essentially eliminating the right side setback would result in a significant hazard to public safety. There would be no emergency access along the right side of the property, risking not only the residents in question, but especially the second residents in the rear of the parcel, as well as the property next door. This could have an adverse impact on the entire neighborhood. Accordingly, the planning board supports the building inspector's decision to deny the issuance of the building permit. Respectfully, in the hot planning board, Daniel M. Berman, Congress Funding Those are all the things I have to read. Okay, so if we're ready, we'll get started, and the applicant can begin with presenting their case. Hello, Glenn Kennedy, uh, Remade, um, and I thank you for, uh, for giving us the time this evening. Um, I hear their, their concern, the uh, planning board's concern about the, uh, the right side. There's three feet of space on that right side of the, of the house right now. It would be uh, about six feet tall. There would be access, certainly not a seven foot access through that, that right side. Underneath the staircase there, so you could access through. If that makes if that makes any sense, we don't want to close it off so that you can't. We would leave it open underneath the deck and have access to get through there. It wouldn't be where you could run through it. Uh, a six foot person is not going to run through uh, easily, but you could you could get through there with about five five and a half feet under the deck. Um, there's only three feet on that side, and the reason that we are um, we're doing our plan was to to look at it this way is that it's not so much for the deck, it is the egress um, of getting out of the house. Uh, that's the primary concern, but it was also trying to uh, get parking in the back there um, where we could add a parking space. There was a structure there that was uh, previously there when we purchased it, the house, that was um, quite dangerous actually, and we took it down. Um, that. I think he froze. Um, we added um, permeable pavers and we added in dry wells under there to appease the, the water issue and the water draining issue. Um, so we were trying to increase parking in the back space there. Uh, we have one parking space for the, the front unit for 156. Um, we added a, a parking space for the back unit without trying to say that we have parking in a driveway and there's tandem. Uh, you know, parking there. We we specifically went for three spaces. That third space being uh, the garage, but two side by side parking there. If that makes sense from the plan. I did include a photo in the uh, in the proposal where you can see the header. Um, of where the deck would go at that five foot height there. And I could push the, uh, in that photo, I believe it was page five, um, I could push where those cinder blocks are, I could push those back uh, about five feet if necessary to create more of a step underneath there. <coughs> Mr. Kennedy, are you done with your presentation? Because I have a couple questions for you. Sure. Yeah. First of all, who owns this? Who owns this property here? Remade. My my myself. My company. Sole ownership. LLC. Okay, but I thought I saw something about a condominium on here. With the about did what? Form, did you form a condominium? Yes. So it's under it's under a condominium trust, Bass Point Condominium Trust. Okay. And um, are any of the units sold? The back unit, well, 150 is sold. So these are two separate um, units on, on. Unit close a. again. Mr. Mr. Kennedy, you keep freezing on us. Um, so uh, we'll just have to, could you repeat the answer? Because yeah. I have, have any of the units been sold and, and who owns what units? And what about the condo association in terms of 
Has it been turned over yet? One unit has been sold. One of the two units have been sold. Um, and Philomena did, uh, Asante purchased 150, the, the back unit. She was going to try to be on the call. I don't know if she made it, but she sent a email in favor of the, uh, in favor of the project. Okay. And we have, we do have a buyer for the front unit. We are, um, we are under agreement. Uh, we're just waiting to see if we get approval here um, to build the, the deck and, and staircase. Um, and then we can, we can move forward. And my second question is why couldn't you, why couldn't you just build a staircase? Why does there have to be a deck there? That would solve all your problems, wouldn't it? The right side. I'm sorry, I can't you keep freezing. To accommodate you. for the uh, for the car. It's the parking uh, second parking space to be able to pull in. And if we went down straight down to the left, we have a an egress to the basement underneath, and we would have come down right on top of that staircase on top of that um, access there. We looked at many different uh, many different uh, layouts for this, and it was really trying to get the staircase over to that right side seemed to be the most logical place for it. So my question is, if you were to eliminate the deck and simply do a set of stairs coming down, wouldn't this solve? Wouldn't that solve the problem? We would be we would be uh, five feet in the setback. But that's what you're currently at is five feet of step back. Yeah. But you have an eight by 10 deck there. There's four feet going to the left. The deck is, the, uh, the, so let me go over to the plan. Let me go to the plan here. Uh, <coughs> so the, the staircase is, And the deck is, is nine feet total. And that is to the landing. I could narrow up the staircase, um, but it's only, uh, I could narrow it up, but I, I, need, I need at least 32 inches wide uh, for that staircase. I could, I could narrow it up, uh, to give more egress on that side, but I don't think I'm going to get three. I can't get three feet out of it. But you also don't need an eight by ten porch. I mean, you have a you have a eight by ten porch. That is not that's taking really up. the the requirement here. It is the egress. We've got three decks off the front of this house. Right. But okay. I also, if you look at the photo where the um, uh, where it says a, a spatial area of deck with a rear view of the house. You see that photo? Yeah, the the pictures of the three decks. Yeah, uh, not the not the front of the house, but the back of the house, where the where the the the, the, um, the illustration where I've got ten feet and then three foot six. Yeah. If you yeah. see well, where the permeable paver is to the to the back of uh, to the right side where that permeable paver hits the um, hits the asphalt, that is nineteen feet for the parking space. Right, but, but what, what, I, what we're saying, and I think um, yeah. the chair is, is saying the same thing. You have an eight by 10 deck. The space that the eight by 10 deck is taking up could be reduced and you could literally put your stairs in and reduce uh, a little bit more of this. Of, it could eliminate the setback issue. It could eliminate, well, uh, it may, it's going to reduce your lot coverage, maybe back down to your existing. Sure. Sure. You're only going up by a percentage. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's the fact that you have an eight by 10 deck. I, I know I under, totally understand the egress uh, portion of it, but it's your egress is attached to an eight by 10 deck. And the eight by 10 deck is, is adding to your. Um, to that total number. Sure. Yeah, it's adding to your lot coverage. It's adding adding to your setback. It's adding adding for your open space. 
Mm -hmm. Parking is different, but. Yeah. If I reduce the size of that deck down to appease those issues, do you, if you can see where the staircase is, uh, I could come down off of that, off of that back area. Um, I would still be heading over toward that setback. In order to in order to get that 19 feet from the parking space. I, I understand. I, yeah. I think you could, I think you could, you could, I, I mean, we're not supposed to give design ideas, but I think you could do a set of stairs. You come out the, the door, you yep. turn right, you go down partial to a landing. I don't know how many steps that would be. Then you go back towards the left and another set of, so that your staircase is essentially in the, the area it's switchback so it's, your staircase is essentially in the space of your your deck i mean i and then i can see okay now you have an egress and this is your egress i i, I would feel more comfortable about saying yep we're, we're granting a, a, either a variance or a special permit for an egress but you're adding a deck and and mm -hmm. and despite the, the besides the neighborhood being congested i drove by and this is about as congested as it, you can get with with two you know two two um residences or two houses <coughs> on that one lot i don't disagree with that yeah. so. mr kennedy uh question what, what was this property originally before it became two condos, was it a single house, or what? What was here? It was. It was a. Uh, it was a single property um, with with two houses. It was one one property with two houses, and we we did not subdivide. We could not and did not subdivide the property. So we had to, in order to sell each unit on its uh, as a freestanding unit, we had to turn it to a condo. Okay. One other question made to the board. Uh, so if this change that Peter is talking about were made, how many variances or slash special permits are we still dealing with? Well, I, I I don't know what stairs count, but I mean, so your lot coverage right now existing is 2059 and it went up to 2107. I mean, your eight by 10 deck um, is gonna, you're gonna- 80 feet. Yeah, 80 yeah. feet. So you're pretty down, down close to the special permit uh, eliminating the special permit there or special variance. Your right set setback stay in my estimation stays at five feet because you can stay along the side of the house. So you lose that one. Peter, You're I think open. that the special permit would still be required on the lot coverage because he's still going to be over. Oh, right. I'm sorry. He's still over the 25%. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. You're right. Um, your right setback. I mean, existing is five feet. He's staying at five feet. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that puts us and then open space. Uh, I mean, open space, you're going from, you know, 55 down to 37%. That's, that's huge. And then I, I do have a question. Are, are on we parking. going? Can I, can, going I ask down to about, can I ask a question about that? The, the space? Yep. There was a, uh, a six and a half by 12, almost, I think it was 11 and three quarter inch um, uh, unit, a, a basically a, a doghouse that was there. It looked like a doghouse, but it was a uh, it was a, a sub level uh, structure that was there when we purchased the unit. We removed a, the same, almost the same square footage of a of a structure that was off the back of the house that was very dangerous, and we Is removed it. The shed? it huh? Was it a shed? It was, a, it was like a shed off the back that had a deck on top of it. The same size deck that was on top of it, 
but it was only it was two and a half feet to the right of where that where the door is. It was a large structure. I have photos of that structure. I didn't include it in this in the presentation, but and we removed because it was dangerous. And so when we when we looked at the plan of replacing the deck, it was basically replacing the deck that was there in kind without the structure on it, but moving it over. I get that the uh, the idea of putting the staircase further over is pushing us over the lot line more, but our actual open space was really not decreased from what was already there. It was the same size structure. And if you look on the plan, Froze again. Uh, to 156 rear. Mr. Kennedy, I'm sorry. You keep um, freezing the, and we can't understand what you're was, saying. Uh, that was submitted from Boston Survey. You can see the structure in the back there with the staircase going out to the left toward the driveway. That structure was the same size as, uh, and almost a little bit larger than what we're what we're uh, proposing here, we just pushed it to the right side and pushed the staircase off to the right. I, I didn't hear all of what he was saying. Issue. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. You, you keep cutting in and out. I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure if it's your internet connection or if you're not close enough to your device. But we didn't hear um, half of what you just said. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what it is that uh, that you're hearing. I've, I am connected directly to my to my um, router. Um, can I can I call? Can you give me one moment and I will dial in on my phone? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Give me one moment. I'll dial in. Give me one second here. I'm going to turn. I'm going to mute myself so you don't hear me twice. Yep. Actually, you should turn the volume down on your device as well so we don't get feedback when one of us speaks. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yep. Yes. There you go. Okay. Better. Thank you. Um, so if you go to the, um, what I was saying about the, uh, the, there was a structure that was, uh, that was on, that was there on the house prior to, uh, that was when we purchased it. And what we did was we removed that structure, that um, basically that shed that was underneath with a deck on top of it. And that shed uh, if you look on the proposal where it says the original conditions uh, from Boston Survey, you can see that that was on the, on the house there, and there was a staircase coming down, headed toward the um, toward the driveway. And what what we did was we removed that structure and the deck that was on top of it, and we move. Our idea was to move it to the right side, and when you walk out the door, and put the staircase over on the right. So it was essentially a replacement of the deck that was there, but without that, that shed underneath it. And then giving us the ability to put that parking space behind it. So we had, there was more, there was actually more square footage 
of the house that was taking up that open air space than what we are presenting right now. Um, so again, I'm not whole, I'm, I'm looking for, my concern really is egress here. It's not necessarily about deck. Yeah, and I, I <laughs> unfortunately, I think you're, the deck is creating issues as well. I mean, the egress is one thing. We all know you need egress out of the building, but the deck is adding yeah. uh, angst to the, um, I got one more question on the, on I the, can appreciate we, that. we call it our, are kind of a cheat sheet, but it's it's basically the dimensional requirements and um, for parking. Obviously, four is allowed. Um, it's it's showing two is existing, and then the proposed is three. I mean, you're showing two uh, cars in in the lot, one and two. But I, where where would the third parking space is it that p-stone river rock area or no there is a, there's the a garage there's a garage at 156 okay. there's a there's a garage for 156 that is the third space so okay. there's two there's one in indoor, indoor space for uh for 156 and one outdoor and then one indoor space for 150. we did not go down the path of a second space for 150 uh on that uh for 150 there because we know that the neighbor next door to us objected to that. So we did not try to create another parking space there. We just put P-Stone down and left it as is. Yeah, but that parking space would have put you in better, a better situation because you would have been in compliance. Right now you're- I was in a constant battle with my neighbor <laughs> about that space. I understand that. I didn't that. want yeah. to go there anymore. Yep. Yeah, okay. We can still go down that path, but I, I just didn't want to go down that path. Yeah. Okay, does anyone have any more questions? That, that was not going to be a legal spot. Uh, are we talking to the applicant now? Because everybody please be quiet. With the regulation, sorry. Um, do any of the members have any questions for the applicant? Um, I'm, I'm going to, I feel like I'm sitting here behind the eight ball. It looks like we're being asked to make a bunch of decisions based upon work that's already done, where one would think before you decide to do a project like this, that you would have come before the board to find out what you could do. And I'm just, I'm having a problem with, uh, did we recently... I want to say in the last three, four months, then we have a situation where when you get into the number of special permits or variances on a non-conforming piece of property that you can't have a number more than whatever it was, two or three or two. Do you remember that oh, well, case, Jocelyn? Um, David, do you want to keep that question for deliberation? I'm sure I can hold it back for that. Only because I want to get through the question, the public comment period next, and then we can talk about No problem. Do you mind? Hey, no. um, just one, one, one uh, technical thing with the, the Zoom meeting. Um, I don't know who has phone number 49001 at the end. Um, is that you, Mr. Kennedy? That is me. Okay, so the device that you're, you're using to, for video you need to turn the volume down because every time one of us speaks, it comes over your phone and as mm -hmm. feedback. My speaker is off. I'll, put, I'll mute you on my phone too. My speaker is off on my computer. Okay. Uh, and, so, and so is the, uh, my microphone. Okay. okay. All right. Great. I'm just, I'm yeah. looking at who's, yeah. who's causing the feedback, but okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'll mute you though right now. Okay. All right. So I, just, I have no more questions right now. Does anyone else have any questions for the applicant before we proceed to the next step? No, I'm good. Okay. So the next step in the process is that we ask if there's anyone here who would like to speak in favor of the applicant. And um, if so, I'm going to unmute as many people as I can here. If you're, if you're muted, just unmute yourself if you want to speak. And um, 
we will take in discussion from anybody who would like to speak in favor of the applicant at this time. You can also use chat if you'd like to. That's right. Put your use comment chat in chat. Well. Mm -hmm. So, is there anyone here who would like to speak in favor? I'll try and unmute all and see what happens here. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Uh, what's that? <laughs> I would like to speak in favor. Um, okay. What is your name? Just give us your name and your address. Sure. My name is Annie Wachtel. I live at 1640 Steps Lane. 1640 Steps? Yes. And you're speaking in favor? You're speaking in favor. Can I elaborate or no? Yeah. Sure, of course. Just want to say, because I'm the one that sold this house to Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> it was originally three houses on one deed. And a while ago, one was sold off. Then it was two houses on one deed. Very typical in the hop for the generational houses to all occur. So it was all those homes from since the 1900s. It isn't that he added anything to this. Just want to be sure that comes across clearly, because if anything, I think he's actually taken away from the structures that existed there. So there's less there. It is a crowded part of town but he's not one adding to the crowding. So I just wanted to be sure that was clear. In addition, the, what we're calling a shed was really in a part of the house that was attached to the house. It had a door right from the basement that went out. There was like a, an area underneath what were the existing then. And then this big odd dirt room, which is very creepy looking <laughs> and not in good shape and definitely unsafe. And that is what he took away which is unfortunately also what took the egress away that did exist. That's all I want to say. Okay, is there anyone else who'd like to speak in favor of the applicant, applicant, not applicant, application? So if there's no one else who would like to speak in favor of the applicant. Hi, yes. Oh, Hi, yes, my name's Wilson. Uh, uh, I'm, at, uh, I'm sorry, could you say your uh, name again? I couldn't hear it. Wilson Tom. Wilson. Tom, T O M. Tom. And what's your address, sir? What's your address, sir? Uh, I'm on 10 New Street in East Boston, but I'm actually the, uh, my wife and I are the buyers. Buyers of, of this. Sorry. You hear it? Okay. And what did you want to say, sir? Well, basically, I mean, uh, with, with with regards to whether there's uh, stairs or or the actual deck where Mr. Kennedy is actually proposing, if the, if it's in fact that there's going to be stairs, what I would would want to try to impress upon is that at the top of the stairs there will be some form of landing, so that way if we were coming up with groceries or something like that, that we could just actually plop them down, and get the door open, as opposed to just stairs if you if you kind of know what I'm saying not necessarily mm -hmm. the eight by ten foot deck that is be, that is uh, being proposed but at least some form of landing maybe like a four by four somewhat somewhere around there uh, of a landing at the top of the stairs that leads up to the door did you want to say anything else sir uh, and basically that I, I don't think that anything that is going to be done is going to be that invasive with regards to what is, is is already there, but yes, I think that's that should be it. Okay, great, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of the application? Okay, is there anyone present on Zoom here who would like to speak in opposition of the application? Is there anyone speak in opposition of the application? No. Nope. Okay. All right, so at this point, what we will do is we will move on. Um, we have just had our public comment period, and now we will go into deliberation. This is when the board members speak, and um, other people really can't speak to us during this time, unless it's an emergency. <laughs> and then, um, of course, let us know if it's an emergency. But we will discuss the matter, and we'll probably have some motions, and we'll kind of figure out our next steps. And if Mr. Kennedy, if you could sit, sit there and stay, stay accessible in case we need you have any questions, that'd be great. Okay, so everybody, let's get started. What does everybody think about this matter? Dave? 
All right, so let me go back to what I was saying. It, I feel like I feel like we're being called in to make decisions on a on something that some of these some of these should have been requested before any work was done. So, I, you know, we we we're kind of in a situation where okay, we've sold property, we've got another buyer, and now we're trying to figure out how to squeeze everything into a, a, a non-conforming four non-conformities, which is a lot. And recently, did we have a case regarding uh, the number of non-conformities that were allowed in, or number of special permits that were allowed in a non-conforming property? I'm trying to. I think we had we this issue was raised before where someone came in seeking several pieces and it was it was excessive and we talked about it. Um, I don't know if there's any actual limit legally. Um, we can take a look in the bylaws. And I can. Yeah, Peter. Um, I'm scanning now. <laughs> yeah, because I, I remember something. This is what we need, Max. Yeah, I don't see any issue with the number of areas of relief that they're requesting. Um, it does make it more difficult for us to grant it, obviously, when there's more than, you know, one or two pieces of relief needed. It almost seems impossible in a way when you're looking at it and saying, can I, can I even grant all this relief? Um, I took a look at the parking and the plan that we have, um, well, in the, the zoning bylaws, I'll show you all right now, the table, is 2.0 for a dwelling unit. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. But we can grant that relief with a special permit according to the previous part of this section. I did look that up earlier. So that's something we could grant if we chose. I guess it's still difficult to get past this issue with the right side egress for me. What does everybody else think? I'm I'm the same way. At one, I mean, one. You're one foot on the property line. I mean, isn't it with a fence? You got to leave six inches of right. the other person's property so that it, in case there's an error. I mean, I'm yeah, yeah. I agree with Peter on that reconfiguration of the stairs so they sort of either drop under under the deck and stay within that same. Um, uh, distance now the five feet. I'm just my concern is like the public safety access, you know, fire and EMS. Like if they only had an option to come up that side, it just you knows a fence there. It's just one foot, just I think too yeah. close. And and getting underneath. I mean, to Mr. Kennedy's point, he said, you know, you wouldn't be able to run under there, but you know, people would be able to pass under there. That just that's that's not. Um, really you know good for the fire department to have to maneuver around a set of stairs and and maybe right. dock or whatever and if they have apparatus ladders any kind of equipment right. and things like that is a problem it becomes a problem so we uh Jessica, let me go back to the to the parking for a sec so the party that is not going to get the to two spots is the Back. Existing at number 150, correct? Yes. All right. So is that an issue we need to be looking at? It is because we only have three spaces when four are required. Right. So so we're we're dealing with both lots with with both buildings per se. Right, it's one lot. Because it's one, because it's it's one, one lot. It's one lot for us. And, you know, whether a certificate of occupancy is issued for that first one, 150, I don't know how that could possibly have happened when this whole condominium project hasn't been before us previously. Um, right. Yeah, really. How, how does that? How's that question for me? I don't know how that happened. <laughs> does the planning board. Can I respond like, to that? No. Can I respond to that? Sure, please do. Oh, sure. Uh, number one, the 150 is a 770 square foot, one bedroom, one bath unit. And it was purchased under the, under the pretense of one parking space uh, because, because it is a one bedroom, one bath. 
It doesn't, you know, that has no bearing on it. And zoning bylaw I, requires a residence to have two. I understand that. Um, there was, there was only literal, realistically two parking spaces there. Again, someone could have said they could have four tandem parking spaces on that in the driveway that was there. That's not what I was going after. I was, I said, I could line up five cars in that driveway. Yeah, and it's it's just that's just not what I would the way I would sell it. Um, Mr. Kennedy, did you get a certificate of occupancy for that first unit from the town? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And with with and the knowledge was, with the knowledge that they only could have one spot. Yes. Because that would have to actually come before us, would it not? Right. The plan was the plan was recommended by the building department that we submitted. I had four different plans for parking. It was recommended by the building department and it was proposed to, to CONCOM before we did the work. And they, I told, when we went to CONCOM with this back in the summer of last year, and by the way, this was actually originally proposed, was sent uh, to the building department in September of last year. This is not something that's, that's late. It's getting to you guys very late, it was something that was originally submitted back in September. This has been going on for a long time. It got to you guys in, in May, in early May. Um, but this is not this is not something new. I, I understand that it is new for you. I appreciate that. Yeah, but um, so it was denied. It was denied on April fifteenth of this year. Correct. After this, after the second proposal was sent through. Uh, we, nothing was we denied with, with Wayne. Nothing was denied yeah. prior to that. Uh, it was not denied prior to that, and that's why we, we came. We went and we did the work uh, on the inside and up front, and did the deck so we could show what we were actually doing to the house, uh, the the level of work that we were that we were pursuing on the house, um, and we finished that that up, and then came back and said, okay, let's show them the materials, what we're what we're going after. Uh, what we're trying to do here. We're trying to do the right thing and, and the right project. Um, but if we need to scale it back, that's okay. I'm okay with that. So, so if this went, if this went to the building department in April, is, when did you get your certificate for <laughs> occupancy on the rear unit? Or is, because what I don't understand, I still don't understand that you were given a permit, a certificate, certificate of occupancy for a residence that only has one parking spot and it never went to the either the planning board or the zoning board it just i mean and and i'm not blaming you mr kennedy i'm just questioning i can hand you i can i can i can send you the co well, we're not saying we don't believe you we're just saying yeah we're yeah. just it just doesn't um well you yeah well, Mr. Kennedy, at the, at the very beginning, you mentioned that you spent a long time dealing with a neighbor trying to get a par second parking spot. And whoever that person is, uh, did not want there to a, give you a space. There was an objection to the parking space being that close to their, to their house. Okay, because it wouldn't have met setbacks? It wouldn't have, um, it wouldn't have met, well, it would have met setback on that side. It actually, because uh, it would have met setback there. Um, it was recommended by Wayne uh, not to reduce the size, the width of the staircase that would have given us the, the width of the parking space we needed. I was willing to do that, but it was rec recommended not to do that, not to change the configuration of the staircase for 150 in order to accommodate that, that parking space. So which neighbor was it that was objecting? Uh, it was it was the left neighbor, the, the one to the left of us, 144. And you sold this unit, you have the other unit to Philomena in December, it looks like. Correct. December 2019. I'm looking at the yep. date. <laughs> and I, okay. I assume I assume that person is in, was invited as an abutter. Was on the uh, Philomena? Huh? Phil, 
Yes, Philomena was invited. I have an email from her that said she couldn't make it. Uh, I can read it for you. I can read the email for you, and I'm happy to to send that to you as well. Um, from her, let me see here. One second. Um, this was dated this evening at 6:35 p.m. Uh, good evening, Mr. Kennedy. I will try to attend the hearing this evening. In case I am unable to attend, I have no problem, uh, no objections to you building a deck at the back of 156 Bass Point Road as previously specified. Thanks, Phil, Lena, Sante, 150 Bass Point, Nahant, Mass. Jocelyn, if you'd like, I can send this to you right now. Don't send anything to me. Send it to the building department, please. Thank you. you. Mr. Kennedy, out of clarification, that is not a letter or an email from the person that had a problem with the parking space. That's the person that bought your other unit. Is that correct? Say that again? The, the yeah. email you just read, is that from the person that had an issue with the parking? No. Okay. That was no. the question. So and I the, wanted to make sure there the was no confusion there. And the person that has an issue with the parking is on the is on the line. They are here and didn't object when they were at, when it was asked. What's that person's name? Uh, I see Cecilia Rollo on the phone, and she did, uh, someone from there did say something. Okay, Cecile, do you want to hear from us? Would you like to hear from us? Sure. If you want to make a statement. Up to you. Uh, so, so we asked earlier about who might like to speak in behavior in either in favor or against the um, uh, petition, but no one spoke. Yeah, uh, we we indeed we do not oppose the property having uh, three parking spaces. We did oppose early on a fourth parking space, which is which is not part of the current plan for which Mr. Mm -hmm. Kennedy is seeking approval. We did approve his, we did oppose historically a fourth parking space because the width simply isn't there. And we believe that a, an SUV would not fit between the staircase of 150 and our property line. But we do not object to the property having three parking spaces as is currently uh, being sought. Okay. So just as an FYI, according to the plan the parking plan the it says the the um the width of that space is eight feet six inches by 20 feet three ace p stone or river rock the dimensional requirement for a parking space is eight feet by 18 feet so that space legally is a parking space um and whether whether they're saying it's not or it isn't, that's legally a parking space. It was our understanding that there was not enough space between our property boundary and the staircase because the staircase could not be narrowed. Well, uh, if the if the dimensions on this sheet of paper I have at eight foot six inches and twenty feet is correct, um, I am. I'm trying to find the section that I just read. Peter, you are correct. There's eight foot three inches from the left side of the staircase going up to 150 to the property line. Again, again, we were going down that path. I'm I'm not I'm not going yeah. down a path. I'm just basically yeah, saying that is a legal parking space according yeah, to yeah. the bylaws of the, the town of Nan. So if the okay. person at 150 chooses to use it as a parking space, they can. Um, and, and yeah, quite frankly, on your application, you're showing three parking spaces and you need a special permit because you only have three parking spaces. You're, you're yeah. hurting yourself in this particular situation. I'm trying to be, be non-confrontational in this I, I understand that. <laughs> yeah. I can okay. imagine I can the plan to add a parking space that's need that need be. So, so Peter, let me let me go back to so technically there are four parking spots here. One is in the garage, two are out back of 
between 156 and 150, and the other one is next to 150. Correct? Yeah, I'm just, I just, Dave, I want to verify that I read. Um, and I'm trying to find, I apologize. I'm going to go back to our deliberations now, okay? So I want yep. everybody else stay on mute, please. Yeah. 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 I, I, I want to find that because I know what you're getting at, Dave. Peter, here are the parking uh, regulations right here. Yep. Um, and here's the table of parking. Is it which one are you looking for? The table? No, no. It was, it's up by that. It's up by. Um, again, I'm looking at this at a. It's the the size of the parking space. If you scroll back up, there's a dimension for angled parking and a dimension for straight parking. Yes. I if I read, if I, if my eyes didn't deceive me. Right there. This one. Sorry. Angled is 12 feet, and mm -hmm. I thought I saw eight, an eight is foot width. The depth should be at least 18 feet and 22 feet for parallel. Space should be at least eight feet wide. Exactly. So, so, so essentially, they have. He has four parking space, or or this lot has right. four parking spaces. Right. We don't know if with that particular parking space, what if it's in the setback. And we we would you're saying that if need be there's a parking space mean? there? Well no, what I'm well what do you mean a setback? Well this this a neighbor who's there's saying that it's right. close to their house. So they need so is does a do you need a ten foot setback for a parking space to start? Minimum width of highway is two ways traffic two feet. There's no setback on that space because these were all one property at one point. I don't know how they impose a 10 foot setback on that pre existing structure. It's pre existing. Before well, it, we, the we structure was probably built. Space, the... I don't think, Peter. It's... Okay. All right. I don't know what you guys think. What does everybody think? I'm going to call it a space. Pretty... Jocelyn, what, could you repeat that? I missed what you said. Peter and uh, the board, are you <clears throat> saying that you want to call that last space, the actual space? I, I don't know if it's a space, but it, it's the proper size for a space. You may be correct. It doesn't have the setback. Okay. But I don't know what the set uh, does. It doesn't look like any of it has a setback because it's all non-conforming, so it's not material. Right, right. But I'm, I'm looking at this from a perspective of when you have four special permits, does this equate, does this take one of the special permits away because technically it is a permit? No, um, I, I think because of setbacks, we'd have to dig into that a little bit further. I will say this, there, I, I didn't find anything related to the number of special permits, per, yeah, permits, permits or variances. So whether you have one or a hundred, I don't know that it makes a, a difference. There is nothing in the bylaw that dictates that you can, um, that you, you, you know, you can't apply for Caps the number. Um, yeah, there's no cap. So I didn't see anything on that. Okay. And board members, I have a, qu a chat question that came in from um, Cecile Rouleau um, at 823. And she said, yep. um, would you please state once more the actual space measurement versus space requirement for legal parking space? We are measuring less than eight feet in width. And so, eight feet. Right. We eight know that feet by 18. 8518 is the requirement, Ms. Rollo. Okay, so the problem is, is that that plan that we were looking at, that parking plan, it's not, those are what was done by an engineer, it's not stamped or anything like that. It says 8.6 by 20, um, the, the thing that we, the space that we are talking about, but I think we need to move on from that. All right, so, so everybody, what is your impression at this time? Well, I feel like we're trying to put band-aids on something, on, you know, on, on, on something that's basically already done. And we're, and we're now looking at, well, we've got a house that's about to be sold, and we have to figure out how to put another, in, another exit onto the house properly. Right. Right. I, 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 what really bothers me is the one foot or less. I, I think that's a, um, 
you know, if you, if, if you ask me if it's substantially detrimental, I think it is because it doesn't provide proper um, access. I mean, it, five feet is bad enough, but one foot doesn't allow firefighters to get through, doesn't allow, you know, any type of uh, vehicle, uh, emer I mean, uh, emergency personnel to, to get through there. Um, I, again, I, I feel that there is a, um, while I understand that the new owner, uh, and I, I abide by that, but it, you know, uh, um, if, if they had come to us instead of an eight by 10 duck and had a four by four platform with a set of stairs for egress, that would be more understandable than an eight by 10 deck and the stairs being one foot off the property line. I mean, we're, we were just talking about the, you know, the, the parking space. Yeah, if there's if there truly is eight feet of space over there, there's enough for parking. But to Jocelyn's point, there still is no setback. It's you're basically you're parking right up against somebody else's residence. Right, um, and he didn't apply for that. No, no, I understand. But but right. I'm just I'm kind of pointing out you know the um, the the issues. But I I have the biggest problem with the setback. I think it's a danger and a hazard. Um, I, you know, I mean, when you go from, uh, you know, 55% open space to 37%, that's a, that's a huge, um, that's a huge difference. Um, the parking, uh, eh, that's, it's complex. It complicates it a little bit, but, um, again, I'm more, um, I'm more looking at that setback in the open space. I, Peter, I totally agree with you there. I, I don't see how, I don't see how we could allow that to happen. Would be setting, would be setting a precedent for other properties, especially down in that area, which yep. I certainly don't want to do. Um, I mean, if there's a way to put a four by four, you know, landing on and get the stairs away from the property line, you know, let's you know have that see that plan and you know. And, you know, we hear it. We can't. We can't redesign it here. Right. Right. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Only two. Yeah. So I would agree with that. Um, and so, at this point in time, what I would suggest is that we we give the applicant the opportunity to. Um, if everybody's Donna and you and David McCool, are you all in the same kind of frame of mind before we take yes. the vote? Yes. Once yes, we deny, I, if we deny this petition, it would be a problem for the owner to have to come back. Um, if we were presented with a new plan, Mr. Kennedy, that shows the, um, the omission of that deck and the stairs in place of that deck, it sounds like the members could maybe not guarantee anything now, we don't know, um, that maybe we'd be in a closer place. Um, we still have to deal with the, the, the lot coverage may go down. The, um, Plus the open space is still going to be less. Um, yeah, but I, I'm a little more agreeable to a landing and a set of stairs because it's an egress and it's, it, you know, right. you need to give people an egress. Right. 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 Plus if we can see, figure out that certificate of occupancy for that other dwelling with only the one space, I'd be interested to see that. Um, right. So I know that you want to sell right now, and you're in a you need this egress to do that. Maybe the I don't know if the building inspector would allow you to put up some temporary stairs. The small that might be, might I don't know if that would work. But um, does anyone else, Dave McCool, Donna, anybody, Peter, give any more comments on that piece? I, no. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, I have a problem with the one foot. You can't get a stretch out. You couldn't get anything. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it could be catastrophic. It could be deadly. It's right. not that, that's not going to fly. I agree. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I have no I think issue it's... with that. I, I have no issue with that. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with, with restructuring that, that staircase to landing uh, and doing a switchback for the egress. The, the issue for this, pro, for this unit is egress. It's not having another deck. Again, we've got plenty of decks off the front. That's not the issue here for me. So it really is egress. Jocelyn, if I might, um, recommendation, Mr. Kennedy, would be to withdraw this petition without um, prejudice and yeah. redesign and come back 
if if we make a decision tonight, you'll be held to two years of not being able Correct. to do anything. Is it two years, Jocelyn? Yes. Correct. So, Correct. I mean, yep. that's that would be my recommendation. Um, I think everybody on the board is really uncomfortable with this one foot setback. Um, you know, we certainly can look into the parking and um, and. Uh, you know, lot coverage may change, and open space will even go go you know go in the right or stay in the right direction. So, um, yeah. Again, you know, can I can I just remind that that open space and the and the percentage is we are less than what we were originally from when we purchased the original house. We are, and we'll be further less than we were originally with the with the uh, original structure. Right. Yeah. yeah, you may want to, you may, when you, uh, you know, if you reapply, you may want to talk to the building inspector about that because, you know, we're, we, we just look at this as an official document and I don't I know get why. It. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. I have I a question for the members before you go, Mr. Kennedy, I want a question for the members. Mm -hmm. If, if, um, just speaking to David, Donna and Peter, um, if instead of withdrawing and reapplying, which I, you know. Can we continue it? Exactly. Yeah. How does everybody feel about continuing it and letting Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, I'd rather continue. Um, to, the Actually, that's a better is, idea because then he doesn't have to pay. <laughs> right. I'd rather, yeah. I'd rather, in fairness, continue, continue it. It seems a little more fair, right? Yeah. Um, although we've done all we can to try and do this meeting, but. Um, well, yeah. except, except Justin. I, I actually have another plan oh God, for an acre. I'm afraid we yeah. may not be able to because this is Donna's last night. I do apologize. This should be my last night, but yes. Um, Would you sit just one more time? <laughs> uh, I've been hearing that for how long? <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, yeah, yes, I will. Yes, I will. Just for the continue, if we could continue with Justin. Yeah. Okay. But it was all dependent so, upon Donna, and she just mm -hmm. said yes, she would do it. So do, you, so do we need to make a motion for that? Um, we should make yeah. a motion. All right. I, I'd like to make a motion that we continue this um, hearing uh, to allow Mr. Kennedy uh, to uh, read, you know, I guess readjust his design. Um, okay. Yes, I second the motion, David McCool. Okay, any discussion on the motion? And could I do a roll call of um, the members? Yeah, um, I'm in favor. Uh, Peter Barber, I'm in favor. David McCool, I'm in favor. Aye. Donnelly Leonardo, in favor. David Walsh, in favor. And Jocelyn Campbell, I'm in favor of the continuance as well. Um, so we have to always continue to a date certain. And so we should go for, I think our scheduled meeting in August uh, would be the next time, unless somebody wants to try and do it sooner. What do you guys think? Um, looking at a calendar. Jocelyn, what's that date in August? Uh, yeah. It would be the 11th. Correct. Second. It's Tuesday or Thursday? Tuesday. Tuesday would be the 11th. And we need two weeks of notification anyways, right? Newspaper? Well, we don't have to re-advertise if we're continuing. Right. Oh, OK. Oh, no, all right. So. Well, oh, August 11th. That looks good. Uh, yeah. That looks uh, good for we, me. For all of the members, can can anybody do? Um, doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm going to be away, but I'll, I can log in Zoom from my vacation. Level. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The nature of this life. Yeah. What day were you suggesting? The same date? Yeah, August 11th. 11th, which is a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It's not one of our scheduled meeting dates because we're supposed to meet the second Wednesday of every month when we so have that hearings. That would be the 12th. Right. But, you know, but that's whatever you guys want to do. I can do, before, I can do the. I don't care. I, can, I just came up with the 11th because it was Tuesday this time. So. Yeah. Okay. We're, we only do Wednesdays is, anyway because of Max. Max is not on them. This is true. All right. So you want to do the eleventh then, or the fourth? Eleventh. Yep. Eleventh. Okay. Eleventh it is. Jocelyn, I can submit that new plan on Monday. All right. You do the new plan, and could you give us a better parking plan? That's. Uh, did, you, did your engineer do this? Who did the parking plan for you? 
Do you want me to do you want me to add the parking to the plan? I can add a space there. Um, I, I mean, if it fits, it fits. But I, I'm worried about the setback. I, you may want to talk to Wayne about it because I'm not sure right. what that setback is. And make sure you include a copy of your yeah. certificate of occupancy for the 150 as well in your packet. I will. Yeah. And this is better for you, Mr. Kennedy, because now you don't have to pay. You don't have to. We don't have to re-advertise. <laughs> wait weeks. And I get it. <laughs> And if you reapply, we also have to give the boards another 35 days. We're talking right. about yep. I understand. I understand. Yeah. I'm on the right. same design review board, so I understand. <laughs> right. And I'm, and I'm going to do it off on my vacation. And Donna has already resigned from the board, but she's willing to stick on for one more hearing. So we're all kind of. I appreciate that from both of you very much. Thank you. All right. All right. So that's it for tonight. I'll uh, make a motion. We adjourn. Second. Second the motion. Dave McCool. No objections. No. Anybody in favor? No call. Yeah, uh, Peter Barber, aye. 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 David McCool, aye. David Walsh. Aye. Dustin Campbell, aye. <laughs> good night, All right. everyone. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Good night. Yeah, Thank you. Have a good, good night. night.